greetings a warm welcome to yet another series presentation inside the word of God and I'm praying hopefully that the grace and the strength of the, of the almighty Lord our God our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time I'm here once again but this time in a series presentation and this time this series presentation I am honoring my mentor the born servant of Christ Pastor John whose return is marked this Sunday the 1st of October where he is going to conduct the anointing service and the almighty Lord has instructed me to be part of this service but the only way that I can be part of this service is following his program, his ministrations, and the calling upon his life. So I've decided to embark on a conference which is titled The Anointing Conference before the anointing service on the 1st of October alongside with my mentor, the born servant of Christ. Now, in the anointing conference, which is going to have uh, just a number of episodes before the last chapter, which is going to be on the 1st of, of October on Sunday, I want to present what the Holy Spirit titled unto me as the anointing of grace. And for us to understand more on the anointing of grace, let us get into scriptures in the book of first samuel chapter 15 verse 8 but before i get into the book of first samuel chapter 15 verse 8 i just want to take you a little bit back into some scriptures before the scenes and the events that i'm going to be reading in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 8 Prophet Samuel was the judge all over Israel and why this Prophet Samuel was the judge all over Israel with his sons the people of Israel reached a certain point where they needed a king to reign over them and as they pressed the judge who was Prophet Samuel to anoint for them a king. The Lord God reached a point where he asked the prophet Samuel, how long shall you mourn for the people have denied me by denying you? So the Lord God instructs prophet Samuel to anoint a king who would reign over Israel. And a young man who was named Saul is anointed and it is the young man that was called Saul was anointed Saul is anointed to become king over Israel and Saul did many great works as the king being assisted by the anointing that was upon him to an extent which takes us to the a passage in the first Samuel chapter 15 verse 8 where Saul was misled he was misled and failed to take a simple instruction that he had been given by prophet Samuel now let's go to the book of first Samuel chapter 15 verse 8 which is the same passage that I had referred unto you before the earlier narration and Saul arrives coming from one of the battles after many other battles that he had won taking all the necessary spiritual instructions that had been given by Prophet Samuel but there is a battle that Saul engaged and he was given an instruction to go and utterly destroy everything and not leave even a trace 
What it means is that Saul was supposed to destroy everything. It was not supposed to leave anything behind. But Saul did the opposite. And Saul took Akak, the king of the Amalekites, alive. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. He did utterly destroy everything and destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But somehow, Saul then decided to take with him Akab, who was the king of the Amalekites. And the reason why the Lord had instructed Saul to destroy everything was because the Lord God wanted to destroy everything which they used to idolize false gods. So the Lord wanted to destroy everything that represented their form of uh, worship which does not resemble the ultimate living God. And Saul comes with the king of the Amalekites and this displeased the prophet Samuel. Now, but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and the fecklings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and they refused to destroy utterly everything. What it means again is that Saul chose not to destroy not only Agag the king but he also kept of some of the sheep, some of the belongings that these people had. And this thing, like I said, it displeased Prophet Samuel. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Child of God, when a matter grieves not only a prophet, but it reaches a certain level where the Lord says it repented me, having made Saul a king. When a matter reaches heaven and it repented the Lord for giving you something, and it repented the Lord for assigning you, and it repented the Lord for having a certain class of disciples. There's a level where a man of God mourns and groans. A level where a man of God complains. And that level, I know that level. Actually, personally, I myself, in this season and presentation, as I'm honoring my mentor, if ever I am to see my mentor in a dream or vision, rebuking me. The next thing is that I'm going into a dry fast of repenting. Even if I have not done anything that is wrong, traceable, physical, I go into a dry fast of mourning and repenting unto the Lord because I know what it means when a man that watches over my spiritual life rebukes me, when a man that watches over my spiritual life appears in a vision complaining. Prophet Samuel is mourning because of Saul that he anointed. Saul is no longer taking instructions and even the heavens are complaining to the level that the Lord God, the Almighty God says it repented me having made Saul a king. And he grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel arose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Pilka. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Saul actually has the nerve to come up to Prophet Samuel says, I performed the commandments and every instruction that I was given. Yet he spared Agag the king. The fact that you have not done exactly what you were instructed so, but you have the nerve to stand in the presence of a man of God. You have the nerve to stand in the presence of a prophet and to proclaim and claim to have done what you did not do. 
is another level of disobedience. And Samuel said, Yes, the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as the Lord has in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. What Saul did not understand was that obedience is better than sacrifice. So many times, disciples are given instructions, disciples are given assignments. And I've said so many times that this is not about money. I've said so many times that this is not about what you produce or what you present before the Lord. But when you look at your level of obedience, do you know that your obedience can be traced in the way that you submit whatever you give in the presence of the Lord? Do you know that your obedience can be felt, it can be smelled in what you have proceeded and gave in the presence of the Lord? Your obedience is not measured by how much you give. Your obedience is not measured by how many times you give. But your obedience is measured in the level of commitment, in the level of loyalness, in the level of taking instructions. That is where your obedience is measured. And the soul is coming back with some of the sheep, with some of the, the products. Some of those things which the Amalekites were using to worship their false gods. And this is not what impresses the Lord. You can appear in the presence of the Lord with certain things that you believe and that you will please the Lord and you get rebuked after offering. We know of a man in the book of Genesis, Cain, who offers unto the Lord and he is rejected alongside with his offering. And this is exactly what King Saul did. He did not take instructions. He thought that the Lord would delight in offerings. Yet the Lord delights in obedience. And this thing, again, it displeased Prophet Samuel. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Do you hear what Saul is saying? He says, I feared the people. How could you fear the people? How could you listen to the people? How could you bootleg the people instead of taking instructions that the Lord has spoken so? All this time, the anointing is the one that was guiding you. The anointing made you king. The anointing made you win all the battles. But you reached a certain point where you felt that you were in charge of whatever was happening. Saul realizes that he had sinned in the presence of the Almighty Lord. And Saul stands in front of Prophet Samuel, pleading unto the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return again, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and you have rejected his commandments. And you, Saul, you have been rejected this very day as king. Those words, when I read them in scripture, they were very striking. Why? Because the words that have been spoken by a prophet who anointed you to be king, and these words that have been spoken, they are not just words, but these are words that are coming from above. And Saul is rejected from being king. And after Saul was rejected from being king, God instructed Prophet Samuel to anoint another man as king, and this man was David. I want to present the anointing conference with the born servant of Christ, honoring also the works of my mentor and honoring the anointing that is upon my mentor. Now, David has been chosen by the Lord God, but before David is anointed, Samuel sets on a journey to go and look for David and arrives at Jesse's house. Jesse is the father of David and Jesse had seven sons. And one of these seven sons, one of these seven sons was David and David was in the fields keeping the flock as a shepherd. Every time 
of Prophet Samuel arriving at Jesse's house, all the other sons that were, were in that household, they were fit to be anointed. When you, when Prophet Samuel would look at each and every one of them, you would look at the height, you would look at the appearance, there were many signs that would give an impression that this is the one. But the Spirit of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord would say, no, this is not the one. Up until Prophet Samuel is inquiring, do you have another son that is not here? Why? Because the anointing of grace is going to locate you, not because of your qualities, not because of your qualifications, not because of the way that you look. The one that was fit to be anointed was not even on the ground. The one that had been chosen by this anointing was not even in that environment. He was down there in the fields. The last person in that house, the youngest of them all, was not inside that house. Now, let's go to the book of First Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his conscience or his height of his stature, because I have refused him. And this referred to each and every one of them that would come forward, one of the sons of Jesse, and then the other one would come, and all of them would get disqualified up until the Spirit of the Lord referred Samuel to David who was not even part of the household part of the sons who were inside that household now then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that very day child of God David is now anointed but there is something mysterious David is the youngest David is one of the youngest amongst his brethren David is not even inside the house David is not the kind of man that you would find at home he would be down there in the fields whilst his other brothers were at home David would be told go and look after the flock why because you are the youngest David is the Amongst the brothers, as the youngest, he's the type of brother that gets assigned to do this and that. Why? Because David is the youngest, meaning that in this household, anyone that feels like assigning David, anyone that feels like lecturing David, they will do so. But when it comes to the anointing, David is the chosen. And amongst the seven brothers, none of them would ever discern that David was fit to be anointed. Now David has been anointed. And the moment that David is getting anointing, uh, anointed, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, and if you go to the next scripture, immediately the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit of the Lord came upon Saul. Now, I need you to understand something. As soon as the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, an evil spirit from the same Lord came upon Saul. When, when an evil spirit came upon Saul, Saul started roaming and loitering inside the palace. So that you may understand that what was enforcing the kingship of Saul was the anointing that was upon him. The moment that King Saul failed to take instructions, it was already a sign of that anointing that was about to, to depart. And after the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul said and said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from the Lord is troubling you. Let our Lord now command you, Thy servants, which are before you, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on the harp. And so said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him in my presence. 
Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse's house. I don't even know what came upon Saul to send messengers unto Jesse's house, the same house where Prophet Samuel went and anointed David. There's something that happens when you are now anointed. The same anointing is still locating David. David is being located by the anointing. There's something mysterious that happens in the life of someone that has got an anointing. Even when there is no one to assist you, even when there is no one to locate you, even when people don't heed to your instructions, that anointing will just find a way to locate you. David, how are you being anointed? And after being anointed, you are being located by the anointing. The anointing still has your address. It knows where to locate you. And why is David being located by this anointing? David, you need to go to the palace where you are going to play the harp. And as you will be playing the harp, the spirit of the Lord will be coming back upon King Saul temporarily. David is already a king in the spirit. But he goes and plays the harp in the presence of a king who is already demoted. And whilst David is playing the harp in the presence of a king that is already demoted in the spirit realms, David does not rush to become king. David does not go around breaking that I am now the king. David goes into the presence of a king that is no longer anointed, anointed and continues playing the harp. Something that happens when you reveal to a certain disciple the gift and the calling upon his life. He feels that he has to replace the revelator that very day that you announce his calling. David continues to play the harp. And while he is playing the harp, he knows that the anointing that I'm using here to play the harp is not just the anointing of playing the harp. This is now the anointing of kingship. And he plays the harp. And so many times when Saul would get tormented by these evil spirits, when David would play the harp, the spirit of the Lord would come and calm down King Saul. To the level that King Saul began to realize something that was inside David. An evil spirit is able to know the next king. An evil spirit knows evil spirits that they understand. I've said this so many times. How evil spirits are able to know someone that has got an anointing while the Christians are busy talking nonsense. An evil spirit that was inside King Saul was able to know that this one that is playing a harp, this is not an ordinary man. This is the next king. And before we can even talk about it, the Goliath that was then defeated, which marked the fame of David, before we can even talk about it, any other offer that was given unto David, the evil spirit that was inside Saul was able to know that this one is the anointing of grace. Child of God, I'm here today. I'm here to officially present the anointing conference between before the anointing service on the 1st of October. As I prepare for the anointing service, alongside with my mate of the bond and servant of Christ, Pastor John, I'm here to present the anointing conference that will be running up until the 1st of October on the anointing service. I'm here to speak the anointing the anointing of grace upon your life. The anointing of favor upon your life. You shall be located wherever you are. You shall be known wherever you are. I don't mind and I don't care where you are. I don't care how many people support you. I don't care how many people don't believe in you. I don't care how many people don't heed your instructions. But the anointing of grace, the anointing that locates you, is now coming upon your life. Raise your hands wherever you are. I want to pray for you. I know you might be in any situation, any situation that is devastating, any situation that is disastrous. You might be in a situation where you believe that you, you have reached a dead end. But this anointing that is being released in this season, the anointing of the born servant 
of Christ, Pastor John, the Araka Prakoseke Televo Shakata, Zeko Tekelevo Shikata. I'm praying for you up until the 1st of October in the official service. I'm tapping into the anointing of my mentor, which is already the anointing that has sent me to present. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, favor and grace be upon your life in the name of Jesus.